Hi everyone, it's Lady Rose here with you for our pick a pile um, for our latest one. I'm going to be putting this up on my YouTube channel so that you can watch it. Pay attention to the dates um, so that you know uh, what reading you're getting and if you're getting it the right one at the right time kind of thing. So if you haven't been to my Facebook page, I usually put up a picture of each of the piles and you get to pick at that point. So you can put it in the comments uh, on my Facebook page as to which one you picked. So this week we had the cauldron to pick from. So there's the cauldron. Um, or you could pick the candles. So there's the candles there. Or you could pick the chalice was the other one. And then for the last one, uh, you could pick the magic circle. So if you, if you haven't picked already and you've stumbled across this reading, just take a moment, maybe pause the video and see which one kind of resonates with you. Now, when I do the pick a pile videos, I do make the title page the picture of each of the piles. So you can um, stop the video and kind of look at that picture and see if there's one that's calling out to you or resonates with you, that sort of thing. Um, and see which one applies to you. So I found this week that a lot of you had a hard time picking. You were sort of, I'm between this and that, I'm between the cauldron and the candles, I'm between the magic circle and the cauldron, or I'm between the chalice and the candles, that sort of thing. A lot of you were sort of seesawing. So uh, maybe there's some seesaw energy. Um, your pattern in your stars can also be seesaw as far as astrology goes too. That's actually a, a pattern type. Anyways, I'm going to go into the reading, but first, of course, as always, I'm going to talk about the decks that I used for this week. So I drew out my Witch's Wisdom um, this week uh, for this reading, uh, partly because I was in the middle of planning some of my uh, October readings. Yes, I'm already looking at October. Uh, for the Halloween and Samhain readings that I do. October is kind of my Christmas month that gets really, really busy. I even have a hand fastening I uh, am doing on Halloween day. Uh, so that's exciting. So I uh, have this Witch's Wisdom. I love the colors on these cards. So I'm probably gonna be using this a lot in October for the pick a pile because I, I have different themes in mind. For the deck itself, it's it's quite very pretty. It's silver uh, gilded on the edges and that's what the backs of the cards look like. Already pretty, right? Fairly good size. They're oracle cards, these ones. Um, and as you saw from the pictures that I just showed you, quite colorful, lots of purples and blues and things like that. Um, so it's, it's an interesting deck. I really enjoy using this one. And I do pull it out for any witch readings or uh, Halloween, Samhain kind of readings at time of the year, that sort of thing. Then the other deck that we're using is the Archangel Animal deck. Now I believe I've used this deck before. Um, I do love this deck. It's a it's a very um, comforting kind of deck. It's got some sacred geometry, mostly animals, of course, and how they connect with the archangels. So there's angel energy that's being drawn in. So it's very much about your spirit guides and that sort of thing to show you what the back of the deck looks like. There you go. So you get a little almost mini um, review of the deck. I will be doing a review of this deck uh, later on so that's another one so watch my playlist too for reviews if you're ever looking to buy a deck and you want to kind of get a feel for it or know what the pictures or artwork is like on the inside um, and you've been perusing online or Amazon or whatever uh, you can't always see what every card looks like I don't show you every card when I do a card review I do like to hold back a few at least a few more than a few obviously but uh, cards so because I'm not one that's just gonna go through a deck and just kind of go yeah this is what this card looks like that's what that card looks like um, to me that's a boring kind of review I like to give you an idea of what the energy of the deck is I give you some key cards so you get a feel for what the artwork looks like that sort of thing um, but I do hold some back so that when you purchase your own deck there's a few surprises in there. There's some cards you haven't seen before. Um, so that's always fun. Now this is a beautiful deck, this fourth deck that I'm using. Um, this is Nature's Whispers. 
beautiful, beautiful artwork. There's examples of some of the artwork on the back there. And I find that this um, deck, it's an oracle deck as well. Very gentle, very gentle, but it's also very um, just point blank. You know, it just says what it, you need. Be spontaneous is one of them. Acceptance of love, um, pause. You know, just sort of not very wordy, not a wordy deck, but gets the point across in its beautiful pictures and in its simple wording. I find it almost has, um, even though it's gentle, it almost has a bigger impact because of that. Sort of it's less is more kind of idea. And then I also am bringing back an oldie but a goodie, my Moonology deck. So there's the box, what it looks like. I'll put links for all of these decks in case you want your own. Um, I think I've done a review for this one. Not sure if I have, I'll have to take a look. But like I said, check my playlist and see what decks I have reviewed. It's a great way to, you know, see what the deck is like if you're purchasing your own deck. And again, I'll put the links for this on here. Moonology, of course, this deck, if you're not uh, familiar, if you don't remember the million times that I've described this deck, <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I use it all the time um, in a lot of my readings that I do here at the parlor. Um, I use it with almost every reading because I love um, the energy of it and it talks about energy. It talks about, you know, okay, so you're in a, a waning moon. Now's the time to kind of let things go. Now's the time to slow down. You're in a full moon. Now's the time to let things come in, you know, really set some goals, that sort of thing. It's a new moon. Now's the time to start things, that sort of thing. So I really find it's very uh, pinpoint accurate for the kind of energy that you're in for the situation, for the time frame, whatever you might be looking at. So now for the piles. So we start with the cauldron. Cauldron was the first one and it's containment. So containment. So that's what this one is about. Now I've got little rhymes for each one. So the rhyme for the cauldron is Hubble bubbles, not the way. Simmer softly, await the day. Keep within that which you know. Time will come for you to show. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mote it be, there it has done. So what the cauldron is saying to those of you that picked the cauldron is it's time to put a lid on things. Don't stir the pot, don't stir the pot. And in fact, it's actually saying there's some ingredients that are still missing. So. There's a couple of different reads in this one. With the cauldron, it's um, maybe you're starting, well, maybe you've been working on something and you want to get it out and you want to tell the world about it. Maybe it's a new business, maybe it's a new book, maybe it's a new announcement of some kind. Now's not the time to make that announcement. Hold back and you'll know it's, it's soon, but it's not right now. So hold on to whatever it is you want to get out and wait a few weeks, two or three weeks kind of thing before letting it go. The other thing too is like I said, don't stir the pot. So maybe there's a situation happening and maybe you're placing some judgments and you're placing judgments based on the information you have right now. So I'm not saying those judgments are wrong. I'm just saying you're missing some ingredients. You're missing some piece of knowledge or some thing that you need to know about in order to make a better judgment. This could be for business, this could be for personal as well. So those of you that pick the cauldron, you're sort of wanting to self-contain anyways. So you kind of knew that in the back of your head. So like I said, now's not the time to stir the pot. Now's not the time for big announcements. Now's not the time for big moves. Now is the time to kind of sit still, sit with this energy, not terribly long, but you need to sit with it before you can make the decision that's right for you or the judgment that's right for the situation. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now your archangel that goes with it, um, you've got the whale. Oh, I love whales. If you've ever had the wonderful opportunity to go whale watching, it's a beautiful experience. There's nothing quite like a whale. So you've got the whale energy and I love all the, the twisting and turns and the chakras and the sacred 
geometry that's coming in here. Whales just embrace all of that. And it says, live as a fully conscious being. So be very aware of things, watch for things, do things purposefully and mindfully. Be extra mindful this week. Try not to do things by accident. I mean, sometimes there's happy accidents, absolutely. But for you this week, it's about doing things on purpose, with deliberation, and with mindfulness. That's what this week is all about for you. Because um, there's probably not going to be happy accidents. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Um, so, the other thing too, we've got the Moonology. Conclusions are within reach. So I know you're feeling very, like, antsy, restless, you know, oh my God, you know, this is bubbling up in me, just like the cauldron, don't let it bubble up. Turn the temperature down, put it on simmer, let the, the stew or the flavors that are inside marry together, because they're not quite done. They're not quite married together, so you get that mwah kind of taste. So that's why you're feeling this kind of weird energy though, because you've got a full moon and eclipse. So that's a very powerful type of moon. And it says conclusions are within reach. So they are, it's just about the timing of it that you have to be mindful about. So wait, just wait a little longer, it's coming. And for your nature's energy, oh, the artwork is just beautiful. I mean, look, look at this. It's like mother nature and she's got all kinds of animals and trees and birds and flowers all as part of her hair just gorgeous I love it I'm trying to get in the right light for here and the message is shift your energy so that's part of why you're having to wait because you need to shift your energy not a whole lot again it's gentle she's blowing a gentle breeze right it's just a small shift not a whole big life changing, oh my God, kind of move kind of thing. I've got to journal and meditate and all this. No, it's just a small wee little shift. And like I said, there's a piece of information that you're missing right now. So you have to let that information come and then the shift will happen and you'll shift just very subtly. It'll be a very small shift, but it'll make a huge um, impact on you. And then the conclusion will be within reach and the energy will be what you want and the situation will become what you want as well. So there's that, that's for the cauldron people. Now for the candle people, those of you that picked the candles, it says magic right on the bottom, right? So the little poem for this one is, magic comes from deep within, ignite the flame, let it begin. Desires in mind, don't be the fool, Focus as you choose your tool. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mode it be, there it be done. So, those of you that picked the candle, or were waffling on the candle, you wanna start something new. And when, there's something about when you light a candle, right? Candles are, are sacred, they're across the board in all kinds of religious and spirituality practices, and there's something about lighting a candle that, oh, something has begun, light, has come into our world um, but it's saying you know you know it's good to start there's a new beginning for you right now don't be a fool so think about what you're doing as you do it again much like the cauldron people when you light that candle think about um, what your intention is because when you light a candle regardless of you know what spirituality path you're following you have to think of your intention Sometimes, like for instance, in the Catholic Church, you light a candle for a soul that's passed. So that it, the, the metaphor is to help light their way back to God. Um, and so it helps, you know, cleanse them of sins, because fire, of course, is very cleansing as well, so that they can get out of purgatory and go into heaven. So this is, you know, that's an intention, right? You're lighting a, a candle for a soul that has passed that you clearly have cared and loved about, you can light an intent, a, a, a candle for an intention of getting a new job, of um, changing homes, of uh, a better situation as far as love or uh, marriage goes, that sort of thing. So think about your intention. 
So that's what it is. It's about new beginnings for you and it's about setting your intention. Don't just, you know, skip in and go, okay, I'm going to light a candle. Think about what you want to light it for and really be clear and concise on what your intention is because then the magic is ready to begin for you. So let it start. So for your animal guide, you got the badger. <laughs> I know, he's not glorious, he's not, he's not sexy, I know that. Um, but nevertheless, there is a point to the badger. So the badger apparently is about balance because it says bring your life into balance. So maybe you need to do that in order to get clear on what your intention is and where you want to go and what you want to do before you light this candle to begin the magic. So your moon card is a gibbous moon. So gibbous moon, for those of you that maybe don't know all the stages, gibbous moon is when the moon is almost full. It's just, oh, it's so close. And the next day will be the full moon. And when the full moon comes in, it means your wishes are granted. Um, it's a good time to be grateful for things. It's not a time of releasing. It's a time of gratitude. It's a time of bringing things into fruition. Um, perhaps you've had a long-term plan. Maybe it's the next level of your plan, the next step of your plan, even if it's a baby step. So the gibbous moon, you're very close to achieving your goal. So this is the time perhaps you were thinking, it's never gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. So perhaps you were thinking, you know, you know, what am I lighting this intention for? I've tried it over and over again. You need to bring some balance in. So maybe you need to re-examine the intention that you have. Maybe it's not quite in the right point for you, right in the, to bring that balance for you. So maybe there's something unbalanced about it. And maybe there's something you need to let go of as part of your intention because you're this close to getting it so know that you're very close to getting it whatever it is you're trying to bring into your life right now it's this close keep going just a couple more steps because see the problem is as humans we can't see that it's just a couple more steps by lighting the candle you'll probably light up the path that you need to go and you'll see oh it's only two steps that way well, I can do that. <laughs> so you're so close. Um, oh, and this is a beautiful one from Nature's Whispers. We've got, you are worth it. You are worth it. So perhaps you were ready to give up because you were thinking, maybe it's just not me. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not educated enough. Maybe I'm not skilled enough. Maybe I'm just, you know, it's just not meant to be. But you are worth it. It is very close. Keep going. Bloom like the lotus flower. I love that the lotus flower is here. And there's more candles lighting your way. Lighting your way. Keep going. Don't give up now. You're so close. You're so close. You have no idea how close you are. Um, you're like practically right here. <laughs> and you're ready to go, no, I'm gonna give it up. <laughs> Don't keep going. <laughs> You're almost there. Now for the chalice people. This reading's going really fast. It's nice. Um, I mean, not that I don't like long readings. I love long readings, but the readings have been really clear and concise today. Um, even though most of you are waffling. <laughs> uh, so we've got the chalice. I love this card. It's such a pretty card and it's about fulfillment. And the poem that goes with it is, You seek it here, you seek it there. You're sure you have searched everywhere. Look no farther than inside. It's here the magic doth reside. Um, this magic has worked with harm to none, so mote it be, there it is done. So for me, when I was writing this out, I really kind of felt like it was a Wizard of Oz moment. At the moment when the cowardly lion realized he had courage. The moment when, you know, the uh, tin man got his heart. You know, he's always loved all the way along. Anyways, it's all inside. The, the scarecrow got his brain, that sort of thing. So it could be that, you know, you don't realize 
how brave you are, how smart you are, how loving you are. You're not giving yourself enough credit and you're not look you're looking for external things to validate what's already there. And that's a real strength to have to know to truly know not in a boastful conceited kind of way but if you're a loving caring nurturing person know that about yourself know that you're loving and caring and nurturing and cultivate that in yourself cultivate your strengths so many times as a society we're told to work on our weaknesses and there's nothing wrong with that absolutely always room for improvement but what if we focused on our strengths and made them stronger like, it's kind of like, what if Mozart wasn't very good at playing the guitar, but obviously a genius when it came to the piano? He was good at music overall, but what if someone said to him, well, you're not very good at the guitar, so you should work on that one and focus on that one. You're already good at the piano, so don't even worry about it. And we never got any of Mozart's uh, pieces of work that he did because he loved the piano so much. So what if you were to work on your strengths and make them even better than they are? So that's, that's something to reflect on for this week. What are your strengths? If you're one of these people that journal, perhaps journal. What, what are my strengths? What am I good at? What am I naturally good at? Um, what could I work, what am I kind of good at that I could maybe improve a little bit more as opposed to your weaknesses? You know, we have weaknesses for a reason. We're gonna, like not all of us can play the piano, for instance. So why would you keep playing the piano if you're, say for instance, tone deaf? My Aunt Rhonda, I'm named after her, my name is Rhonda. My Aunt Rhonda's tone deaf and she took music lessons, piano lessons for a year or two or something. And finally the music teacher said, please stop sending her, she's never gonna improve. <laughs> because that's one of her weaknesses. She can't play the piano and that's okay. There's lots of other people that can play the piano really well. So instead of focusing on things you can't do and trying to improve those, look at the things that you can do and make those even stronger. Um, so just a, you know, a little bit of insight there. So your spirit guide, your archangel animal guide is the rat. And I love that the rat is in a circle of light and he's got a spiral here, and there's a little bit of the universe here that he's just kind of hanging on to while he sleeps. I love the spiral. The spiral is the symbol of the goddess, and it is also um, sort of a metaphor for our life, because so many of us think we start here and we go to here, or we start here and we go to here, where in fact we start here and we keep going around and around and around. Actually, we we'll probably start here and keep going around because the idea is that we keep ever expanding. But you keep coming back to the same things in a different way. The idea is that you're not spinning circles, you're expanding out. And every time you come back to the same issue, you're able to kind of grow a little bit more and add another layer or take another layer away, whatever it might be, and add another layer of knowledge. And now I've dealt with this. And if it's, you know, um, anxiety or something I'm not as triggered as I once was because I've learned to be on this healing spiral journey and I spiral around to things that trigger me but each time I grow as I expand out further and further it doesn't trigger me as much and eventually the idea is that it won't trigger you at all so the message with the rat is be true to yourself and the universe will reward you and that to me really speaks to what are your strengths? What are you good at? That's being true to yourself. Because when you know what you're good at, when you understand both your strengths and your weaknesses, you know how to work within that realm, within that platform kind of thing. And you know what to draw on, what you can naturally draw on, and you can be true to yourself. Like I said, if you're a naturally loving, warm, nurturing person, you know, cultivate that in yourself. The world needs more of those kind of people. And that will only, you know, cause ripples, good kind of ripples out into the world. So look at your strengths, 
be true to yourself and really know that it's all within you to be able to achieve what you want to achieve. Now for your Moonology card, you're in a third quarter moon. That's your energy for the next week or so. And adjustments are required. Okay, so let me explain quarter moons. The first quarter moon is usually the harder one. So you're in the third quarter, okay? The first quarter moon is kind of like, how bad do you want it? That's when the challenges really come up, that sort of thing. And it's sort of like, um, kind of like a gibbous moon in that it will give you pushback on what your intentions or wishes or desires are. The third quarter moon, so the quarters are all, like, I mean, the full moon is technically a quarter, but it's half, right? Um, so we go into the third quarter moon. And the third quarter moon is about what do you kind of need to let go of? Now is a time for you to let go of things, to release things, whether it's your beliefs. And don't be afraid to challenge your beliefs. Um, again, you know, like, there might not be all the information out there that you need to make those kind of judgments on what your beliefs are. Watch your I am statements. What are you taking internally? When you say I am sick, you are taking that illness right to your soul, right to your soul. So you can feel sick. Um, you can feel like you have a bad cold or, you know, have a headache. I have a headache. I'm not a headache. You know what I mean? <laughs> so watch those I am statements this week and release some of the negative I am statements that you might be sort of unconsciously saying that you're not quite, you, you don't have awareness to it yet. You will now because you'll be watching. So those are some of the adjustments that maybe need to happen. Third quarter moon is when the moon is waning. So it's going smaller. So work with that energy. Now's the time to release things right from cleaning out a junk drawer to releasing weight to releasing bad habits toxic relationships um, cleaning out your closet whatever it might be both in the physical mental and spiritual world now's the time to do those releasing kind of actions now's a good time to uh, pay towards a debt that you owe um, because the debt will go down a little faster um, when you pay it in a waning moon and your energy right now is waning. Even though we're in a new moon, we're, <laughs> we're uh, just for a little while, the moon moves very quickly. But for you right now, the cards are saying you're in kind of a releasing energy for the next week or so. Um, and then once you release, you have a renewal of peace. So you have peace coming this week, probably after you clean out some things, because it'll sort of, help bring a peace of mind, peace of heart, that sort of thing. And it's all from within. Like I said, be true to yourself. And when you're true to yourself, you'll have that renewal of peace. And there you are, sleeping like a baby. So that's your week for those that picked the chalice. Now we've got the magic circle. And below it, it said protection. Okay, I love those shoes. <laughs> it's part of the reason I picked the card. I was like, when I flipped it over when I was doing the piles, I was like, yay, we picked that card. Okay, so the poem that goes with this card, with the shoes and the magic circle, are caution, stop, tis time to warn. Now step into a circle drawn, protection used both day and night, keeps you safe and sends harm away. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mode it be, there it is done. So some of you were waffling on the, the magic circle, I think was the, probably the more popular one that was like, I'm thinking about magic circle and something else. Um, so perhaps some of you are feeling that need to have a little bit of extra protection. Maybe you're feeling um, a little insecure, maybe you're feeling a little unstable about the energy around, that sort of thing. So this is just saying stop, in caution so I'm interested I'm gonna pull first this time your moon card because I want to see how this connects with the stop um, okay so you've got a mutable mo moon <laughs> mutable moon and nothing is set in stone so that's why you're feeling that circle energy you can see the waves are 
you know, white crested and, and very choppy. This is not water sailors want to be in kind of thing. So mutable moon means it's ever changing. It's sort of like, you know, going back and forth. Same thing when in astrology, when you're a mutable sign, if you're a mutable sign, you're able to kind of go back and forth. You can swing back and forth. You might not make a decision, but you can go with the flow at the same time. For the mutable moon, it means that, yes, the waters are choppy, things are changing, you're feeling a little unstable, thus the reason you want the stability of the magic circle. Um, <clears throat> so that really ties together those two things. So right now, big changes perhaps are happening, and you're not sure how you feel about them. <laughs> so, oh, your Archangel um, card, <laughs> you got the goat. <laughs> so I love that you got the goat. I'm married to a goat. I call him my gorilla, but for his astrology sign, he's a goat. So he's a Capricorn. So the Capricorn goat, it's a great animal to get, especially when you're in this turbulent time and wanting that stability. Because anybody that's Capricorn out there knows that the goat is able to climb the sheerest of... Um, altitudes and the uh, mountain sides and they can stand on the slimmest of ledges like they need nothing they need razor thin and they can stand right there with big stability goats are super super stable um, especially Capricorn goats um, so it says act from your innate wisdom because goats are smart they're uh, mountain goats. They can climb those crazy, crazy, you know, uh, angles and stay on those ledges that are just, you know, crazy, insane, thin. But they do it with um, intelligence. They're not just jumping all over the place like the baby goats you see on the films that are just kind of all over the place. Um, once they get, you know, to the adult size, they are very smart. And mountain goats are very smart that way. You don't see a lot of mountain goats falling off of mountains. And there's a reason for that. Because they get really good at what they're doing. And they're very smart about where they can stand. It looks crazy to us. But they know they're good kind of thing right so your animal is the goat that's what's with you right now so you've got this even though you might feel a little shaky and unstable definitely seek the the stability of the magic circle and you know do some meditation do some prayer work whatever it might be for you and to call in your guides and know that the goat animal spirit is with you. They're giving you, your spirit guides or your angels are giving you the ability to walk along those razor edge cliffs and make it to wherever it is you need to go to get over that mountain. You've got this, know that. So even though you feel really kind of shaky, you're good, you're good. Um, and, I, I instantly wanted to say, if it scares you, do it this week. Because you're also making some big moves in some kind of way. And you're not sure whether you should be doing it. You should. Again, if it scares you, do it. Um, because it means you're moving forward. And you've got the goat with you. You're the goat, right? So your, uh, your wishes are coming in in a big, big way. So here's your nature whisper card. It says keep your dreams alive and you've got this character right up here sort of blowing like blowing a wish or a kiss at you right that's the energy I pick up there they've got a crescent moon on their forehead they kind of look a little bit like an avatar and there's a big crystal right here um, you know about crystals forming and your life is just gonna be that crystal like you know light lighted way and you'll have crystals. Like it reminds me a little bit of Neptune. Neptune's one of those planets where it rains diamonds. Like diamonds are just gonna rain in on you. You've got a, a dandelion here that kind of looks like it's in full circle and it's, you know, it's ready to be blown for the wishes to be released. You've got doves over here. You've got the whole, like the twirling and swirling. A lot, a lot of energy like this card, like the twirling and swirling. 
it feels a little scary it feels a little unstable but really ultimately it's where your dreams lie go there know that you have the goat energy your you are that goat you can get across this mountain you can walk this edge you're very capable of doing that and know that you've got the protection with you as well I know you want protection I know you want to run away right now but now's not the time to run away now's the time to move forward for you guys for those of you that picked the magic circle okay so I hope that helped for this week um, thank you so much for being here uh, if you want me to continue doing these readings, I love doing these readings. I like that I can do these, um, even though they're not quite as specific as I would get if I was doing it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there are people that, you know, can't afford a reading all the time. So I do uh, appreciate any donations that you want to give so that I can keep taking time out of my schedule instead of booking a reading with someone else to uh, do this for the group of you. And, uh, and thank you so much for being here and watching. You can uh, support me by making a donation or you can go to my Etsy store. I'll put the links below and make a purchase. I always love selling stuff off my Etsy store. Or you can also follow me on both Instagram at Lady Rose Tarot or on Facebook at Goddess Garage Tarot Parlor. Um, so that's me for now. And I hope you'll join me again when I put up other videos. Thank you, Mary Wise and Gentle Bee. Bye.